Well, it has been a minute since I've done any sort of an AI graphic text to image video. And it's mostly because I can't freaking keep up with the technology. It's changing so fast. New apps coming out and then the same apps get new features, new styles. I, as soon as I'm hitting record, there's another one. So really a lot of the time I've been spending lately is with this little program down here, Stable Diffusion Automatic 1111, what's called Super Stable Diffusion 2. This allows me to run the Stable Diffusion model on my own computer using my um, gra graphics card with eight megs, eight gigs, eight megs, eight gigs of RAM. And that way I don't have to use any credits. I don't have to pay anything. Basically it all just runs on my system. There's a lot of other really cool benefits to being able to do that. Everything I do is saved immediately to my hard drive. I don't have to take special care to download anything. It's just boom, boom, boom. I can try things all day long. And this particular interface is my favorite so far. But there are interfaces popping up all over the place and who knows what will be my favorite next time. But right now, let me just kind of give you a brief walkthrough. I'll do another tutorial or walkthrough of this program in general and I've also included in the description of this video a link to the video where I learned how to install this because I'm not going to reproduce all that here. I'm really talking, I'm kind of jumping ahead of the game here because I'm talking about a very specific feature called out painting. There's also in painting which we will touch on and that's all in addition to the normal hey type what you want to see and then it appear. That in and of itself is really cool and very interesting and you could take a lot of time studying how to create prompts that do amazing things. But I just want to kind of show you this feature because it's just so interesting. And in showing you this, you're going to see just a few, a subset of the features that are in this particular program. It's, it's amazing. It doesn't do everything and it isn't perfect, but it is pretty freaking good and they update it a good bit. At its simplest, what we have here is the ability to go to the text to image tab and type in a prompt and an image will appear. Something that they have really cool here is a negative prompt where if there was any graphic element that you do not want to appear in the, in the prompt, you would type that here. Like kids playing in the yard and then in, if you didn't want them to have shoes on, you would type shoes in there. Let's do it. Child, children, children playing in the yard and I will say negative prompt shoes I'll leave everything uh, basically the same I'm gonna move this sampling steps up to about 50 I'll leave the sampling model where it is the width and height are 512 by 512 which is the maximum that my computer will actually render I'm gonna click restore faces and I'll leave the batch count at 2 right now so we get two uh, two images rendered here so we can compare and see which one we want to start to work with. I'll leave the seed at negative one, which basically the seed is sort of a random number, or you can type in a specific number that sort of starts the process. So if you wanted to recreate an image that AI created, if you knew the seed, you can, you got a better chance of recreating it. But I'm leaving it at negative one, which is uh, random so we'll just see what happens children playing in the yard I'm not going to assign any sort of style or anything like that I'm just going to click generate and there you go not bad right off the bat we got a couple of images coming up kids playing in the yard again these are just more like photographs because I didn't say anything like art style I didn't do anything I just said kids playing in the yard so now they what they generate for us is a thumbnail of both of them and then of each of them so let's just say I wanted to expand on this image using the out painting to make this 512 512 image bigger have more stuff but still maintain the quality of that original image so that's where out painting comes in so the first thing we need to do is move this image over to the image to image tab so I'm just going to click send to image to image it's going to automatically pop on over there and we're ready to start changing things except that we need to turn on out painting and that is done by a script and this is what I didn't know until today. So you click on script and you choose out painting MK2 and now you've got another set of parameters. So out painting again is going to expand the image and we can tell it how much we want to expand and fill in the blanks and we can say whether or not we want it to be to the left, the right, the up, uh, the top or the bottom or a combination of all of them. Now through my experimenting I've determined that it's better to kind of do one 
direction at a time because what if the other direction doesn't look good and you got to recreate the whole image just easier to do it this way so let's take a look at this image and let's decide what we might want to add how about a puppy like a puppy playing with them so what i'm going to do is i'm going to and i'm going to just have the puppy draw kind of to the left so i'm going to expand the image to my left now i want to do puppy playing in the yard and click generate now what's happened here is obviously it's trying to extend it, but it's cutting off the, the dog's face. It's not a smooth enough blend, but now it's working on the other one. There's a puppy. Working, working. You can tell it's trying to extend sort of the brown there. So this looks like kind of a hedge. So this one would work if it lets us have it. If we just think of that as a hedge. And here's the second one, obviously not what we're wanting because that's not a dog, you see. It's like an outdoor toy, that's fine, but it's not a dog. All right, so it's still only showing us this one. And now, why don't we put a cat on the other side? Okay, like a kitten. So, kitten, no, let's do elephant. I can't see what I'm doing, and I can't type. Elephant, playing in the yard. This time we're gonna go to the right, and generate. So, it did. It did overlap nicely. We don't see the whole thing. Let's do it again. Let's drag this over here and just extend it to the right a little. I don't have to change a thing. I just moved it over and now we'll add another. Now you can see it's not linking up too good. We're gonna have to definitely run this again. Try and get something a little more coherent. Generate again. What we want obviously is for them to extend that elephant, not like that, right? So that it looks correct. We're gonna keep doing it. Uh, let me make sure pixels. Oh, wait a minute. I didn't do, I wanted to go 256 on this. That was, first of all, that was one thing that I meant to do. And then let me make sure we've got the, no, the sampling steps for this should be between 80 and 100. So some definite things I missed there. So let's just generate again. Those are optimum settings. That is not doing too good except it maybe looks like there's an elephant hiding behind a greenhouse but no no we're gonna keep trying we can play with the <clears throat> mask blur maybe make it a little bit more all right now we're kind of trying we're kind of trying to make one little elephant there we're getting there we're getting there we're getting there we're getting there let's try one more time with that blur a little bit more and then I want to see if we can put a pterodactyl in the air. All right, I think this is it. Uh, there's one weird trunk thing going off on there to the right, but I think we're going to keep it. All right, that's it. We're going to leave that there. We're going to move that over. That's the thing to remember to do. Move it over. And let's do, um, okay, so we're going to add to the top. Now, this is tricky because I never really, I don't get great results from the top. How about, let's, how about this? Let's, let's create first a cloudy sky. Okay, and maybe create some space up there, and then maybe we can in paint a pterodactyl. And then I'll show you what I mean. All right, so this looks more like trees and not a cloudy sky. So I'm going to just go ahead and interrupt that because that's just way, that's not going where we want it to go. Sky, sky, let's see the sky. Maybe open cloudy, open sky, open blue sky. All right, we got some clouds going up here. Let's just see what it does, see if it extends these trees. We've got an interesting style looking thing going here. Let's see what it ends up. We've got a pyramid thing going in the background. It almost looks like Stone Mountain where I grew up. All right, now i got to kind of think in my head. Now let's pretend they're in a backyard and it's a hedge, right? So that's, that's like a fence back there. So instead of that being an open woods or whatever I was seeing in my head before, it's just like that's their fence and we're looking over it into the sky. So now, let's go, we're gonna send this to InPaint. Loading, loading, loading. Now what we can do is, the sky here is begging for pterodactyls, don't you think? So we're gonna take this brush, I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger, and make the blur bigger. I don't know why, I'm just doing it. And I'm gonna paint this out, this section out here where I want a pterodactyl and then I have to realize that I haven't looked into how to spell pterodactyl correctly 
Pterodactyl, no, get that out of here. Uh, in the sky, why not? Let's see what happens. Weird colors for the clouds, but we'll go with it. Generate. Oh, 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 I do this every time. I forgot to stop to turn off the uh, out painting script. So you gotta do that, otherwise it won't work. Although look, we did get pterodactyls in the sky. I should have let it keep going. I should have let it keep going because it expanded the sky and threw pterodactyls in there. That might work better than the uh, end painting. You can see where we put it and it's not looking that great. In all of my tests and all the demos I've seen online, the end painting in this is kind of the weak link. We'll try one more time and then I'm going to just go right back to what I did before and put pterodactyls in the sky and let it, because uh, see it doesn't look like it's, it's not filling anything in there. We got a wing. We got some kind of a wing thing going. So that's not that's not exactly what we want. So let's get rid of all of that. That's not gonna save. We're gonna go back to out painting. And we're gonna go up like we were. I think all the settings should be the same. And then we're gonna build more of a sky and we're gonna put pterodactyls in like it tried to do without me. And I said, no, stop, you don't know what you're doing. And it said, I think I do. And I said, well, let me just do what I wanna do first. And they said, okay, but look at that. Now we've got some pterodactyls in the sky and the sky is congruent with the sky below it. They're drawing, 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 drawing the pterodactyls, yeah. Any minute now, it's going to be done. All right, that looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. So there's our image, starting with two kids in the yard, then we threw in a dog, then we threw in an elephant with a, a wayward trunk. A cloudy sky with some pterodactyls in it. So that's the out painting. Well, let's try one more time with the end painting. Let's just try, let's just try to maybe, um, well, I am in end paint, that's interesting. And it's still out painted. What can we put here? Let's put the kitten here, okay? Just a kitten in the grass, not in painting, so we're gonna, I mean, not out paintings, so we're gonna take that out. I'm gonna say, kitten. That's all we're gonna say, generate. And let's get a kitten here in the grass. It's trying, it's off, it's, it's off. It's like the pterodactyls were. It's like we see a wing. No, no, no. Let's see. Let's make sure we got sampling steps are up there. Now with, actually, I heard someone say that the DDIM model is better for in painting. So let's just run that model and hope we don't get an error, which sometimes I do. All right. Not getting an error. And there's something drawing there, but is it a kitten? It doesn't look like one. We'll try it again. So again, yeah, the end painting. I've had some success with the end painting, but not a lot. This is more indicative of the types of res of the results I get. So it's very unpredictable. I'm not exactly sure what you know what I need to do. There's probably some setting somewhere that oh, it'll work a lot better if you do that. I'm gonna just try one more one more thing. Make sure everything's good. Yeah, looks good. I want to try and get a kitten in there, but it's just not happening. It's just not happening. Is that supposed to be a kitten down at the bottom? Let's see. Is that a kitten? I don't think so. All right. Well, there you go. There's a little bit, there's a basic overview of how in painting and out painting work, mostly out painting. That was the goal was to show you that because that's, a, that's what I just discovered today was how to finally do that. I knew that this program was capable of it, but I couldn't make it work because I didn't know about those scripts. So this kind of thing is interesting. And again, we just scratched the surface of what's available in this particular interface. It's really cool. But we showed you some fun stuff, so you get the idea. So if this is interesting to you and you have a graphics card that has at least, uh, well, I should say an NVIDIA graphics card that has at least four gigs of RAM on it, again, mine has eight, then this should work for you, at least to some extent. And one of the other cool things about this is that I was actually running this installation off of another computer remotely. In other words, if you knew the URL, you could log in to my Stable Diffusion uh, installation and create 
images. Of course, they'd all be saved to my hard drive, so why would you want to do that? But it works for me because I, the recording software I use chokes when it's also running all of this stable diffusion stuff. And so well, like, how am I supposed to record this? So I'm on my laptop and I am running a browser on this laptop, but I'm accessing stable diffusion through that browser. So all the hard work is being done on my computer. So there's absolutely no choking. It's basically just sharing a screen, what I did here. So super fun stuff to play with. I invite you to do so. Please, if you enjoyed this, why not subscribe to this channel? There will be way more of these things. And like the video if you did. Did you? Okay, great. We'll see you next time.